Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And this time around, it is this thing right here, the NEC PCFX-GA, the DOS slash V variant, a rather obscure version of an obscure expansion card for a rather obscure console. It's just obscurity all the way down. This one in particular is meant to take PCFX console games and play them on your personal computer running MS-DOS through a, an ISA card, among some other things, hence the GA part of it. This is a fascinating device. Let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so this lovely long beast right here is the NEC PCFX GA. What is effectively an NEC PCFX game console from 1994 on an ISA card, with GA standing for Game Accelerator. And this thing sold for 46,000 yen upon its Japan only launch date in December of 1995, the equivalent of around 450 US dollars at the time. So, uh, not cheap by any means, especially seeing that it didn't come with everything you needed to get the thing running. You'd need to provide a PC, of course, but also a CD-ROM drive to actually run any games, something already built into the PCFX console it was based on. The card did at least cost a few thousand yen less than the full PCFX, but 46,000 was still a big ask at the time regardless. Consider that the Sega Saturn released around the same time and cost $399, or 44,800 yen in Japan, and that was a whole dang console with better game support right out of the gate. As you might expect, it didn't exactly break sales records, and the PCFX GA remains a somewhat expensive purchase today. So, a huge thanks once again to Brandon Cobb for loaning this fine example to me for this episode of Oddware. Especially since this particular PCFX GA is the DOS V model, a version that came along shortly after the original PCFX GA card. That model only worked when installed inside the NEC PC98 series, computers that used a proprietary 100 pin C bus expansion interface. Whereas this even less common DOS V model works inside any compatible x86 PC with a free 16 bit ISA slot running MS DOS, or DOS V as the name implies, which was a special version of MS DOS designed for the Japanese market. It's intended for use with version 6.2 in particular, with all its nifty Japanese alphabets and character sets loading in on startup. Now, the DOS V card runs just fine without DOS V itself, so regular old American English MS DOS does the trick if you need to, but come on, I wasn't going to skip an opportunity to install DOS V in the LGR Woodgrain PC and enjoy its regional quirks. Like how the backslash is replaced by the yen sign when typing commands for changing directories. I don't know, I just think it's neat to look at, although not a lot of fun to use unless you've got a Japanese keyboard. Thankfully I do, because I have a crippling addiction to Yahoo Auctions Japan send help. But anyway, yeah. DOS V's reliance on the yen sign and the slash keys being in different spots makes typing on a western keyboard pretty cumbersome, so DOS V is nice to have here with the DOS V card. Go figure. As for what you get inside the box, first up is an assortment of paperwork, including some NEC product registration and repair service forms, along with a 24-page black and white instruction booklet going over the essentials of setup, usage, and troubleshooting, all in Japanese, of course. Yeah, I pretty much wore out my phone's translation app for this one. Then there's a single 3.5 inch floppy disk containing the DOS V setup software, a pair of PCFX GA game and software releases on CD ROM, and a six button PCFX game controller, complete with A and B turbo switches. And finally, there's the PCFX GA DOS V card itself, a full length 16 bit ISA card that's positively packed its PCB with plenty of proprietary pieces of printed circuitry. And one of the first things you'll notice is this little set of switches for choosing the I.O. base address, with the default being OX300. No plug and play silliness here, suck it up and do it yourself to avoid device conflicts. And at the core of the card is an NEC V810, a 32-bit RISC-based CPU running at 21.475 MHz. Same processor used in the original PCFX console, as well as the Nintendo Virtual Boy, amusingly enough. The memory situation also mirrors that of the PCFX, with 2 megabytes of main system memory and a 1 megabyte ROM. 
Same with the sound chipset, providing 6-bit 44.1 kHz stereo output with dual ADPCM channels and six sample channels. But the graphics, well that's where things start getting interesting. In addition to the PCFX's one and a quarter megabyte HU6270 2D graphics chipset, the FXGA also makes use of an HUC6273 with 2.625 megs of VRAM, a 3D chip known as the Aurora. Yeah, this thing renders 3D polygonal graphics on top of the motion JPEG FMV and 2D sprite work of the original PCFX console. From what I've read, it's thought to be on par with other 32-bit consoles and graphical capabilities, rendering around 100,000 polygons per second with full texture mapping, flat and garage shading, and displaying up to 512 colors at 320 by 224 resolution. Not bad. And of course, around here we've got the I.O. section, consisting of a single connector for hooking up an external breakout box. Speaking of which, here it is. It's a white plastic box that plugs into the back of the card to provide two controller ports, 3.5mm audio in and out jacks, as well as connection for composite and S-video output and the cables to go along with it. Yeah, the PCFX GA, an expansion card for playing games on a PC, doesn't actually display games on your PC's monitor. It requires a separate display to view anything. As with the standalone PCFX, the GA card is intended for use with analog NTSC TV sets, with no digital RGB option, so I'm going to use this little Sony CRT here. And with the control box dangling out the back like some kind of DOS gaming fetish plug, it's time to hook everything in, power it all on, and try out some odd old games on the equally odd PCFX GA DOS V. All right, so everything is all set up and ready to go here. And let me just go ahead and get the TV powered on so we can see the card doing its thing. And once that gets warm, I'll just go ahead and turn on the LGR Woodgrain PC. And you'll see here, it immediately powers on the NEC card without needing any software to tell it to do so. It's just on. If it gets power, the card is on. And in fact, yeah, you can interact with it and the computer hasn't even booted into DOS yet. So uh, I, I wasn't expecting that. This, this whole thing works a little differently than I thought it would. It's kind of just a, a parasite that leeches power and some resources from the computer to do its thing. But yeah, with DOS V booted here, um, we are now ready to uh, play some, some games and software and such. Uh, it's not able to do that yet because I don't have a, a CD in there. But uh, let me just go over the, the software installation part really quick because, I mean, this is actually pretty darn straightforward. All that the FXGA needs is a couple files off the floppy disk for DOS to know it's there, which is installed by selecting a destination drive and directory and selecting the card's I.O. address. And that's pretty much it. Once it's complete, you can run the PCFX program within DOS V at any time, and it'll ask you to write a backup file for save games, and by default it actually tries to put this on a floppy disk in the A drive. But if you'd rather not bother with that, then all you gotta do is go into edit and edit the backup INI file in the PCFX directory and change it from A to C. And with that out of the way, we're ready to go here, so I uh, don't need this anymore. All we need to do is go over into the PCFX directory and run PCFX. And you'll see it sort of reboots the card there, puts up a little message. And uh, yeah, we are uh, ready to run it from the TV. It's a, apparently a very pleasant message in Japanese there. Something like, oh, uh, please enjoy the game on your TV. Something like that. And yeah, that's it. Like this monitor is now doing nothing. So really we can turn it off or just leave it there and it's just gonna display that message. That's all it does on the PC side of things, at least for just running games and such. So let's go ahead and uh, run a game. I've got a selection of things that Brandon included. And uh, forgive me, these are all in, in Japanese. So the title of this one is that <laughs> at the bottom of your screen. Uh, there's this. That, that, that's a thing. All these are worth like a lot of money too, from what I gather. Uh, there's this. So uh, yeah, 
kind of a beat em up there. And this right here. So yeah, those are the four titles that I could try out. I don't know if I'm gonna try all four. I, I may as well, right? But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and try the, the shooter one because, you know, I, I love all the different shooters that were on the PC engine, but for the PCFX, there's like this one and I think that's it, which is rather disappointing. But hey, at least it's got one. Once that reads to uh, the D drive is how I have it set up and we can just go and, okay. This controller's pretty much never been used, so the thing is all like sprungy. Anyway, just hit run. Actually, before you do that, uh, it did need to write something to this little memory area, the backup RAM or whatever it is. And so, yeah, I just have it configured to go to the C drive, but I have the file there, it's ready to go. So that just acts as like your, your save cart of sorts. And uh, yeah, now we can just run the game itself and it will access the CD and the save memory area on the C drive of our computer. And I think that's pretty much all it's doing with the PC side of things. Now it's just running stuff straight off of the PCFX card, which of course means lots of FMV. And I mean, as far as FMV goes on a console of this generation, it's really good. And it's a shame that that's pretty much the focus of this console. Uh, you know, not because I don't like FMV, I do, but at the same time, I kind of wish there were more games, you know, more game play. It seems like all of these that I've tried, it's like 80% FMV and like 20% gameplay. I don't know, maybe that's just the selection bias going on, but whatever. Um, yeah, let's check this out. The more FMV, man, like seriously, get a full on anime. Like I know they're happy about their, their robots that are on fire in animation, but uh, I'm ready to shoot some things out of the sky. And I'm going to engage the turbo switches on the controller, because shooter. And yeah, <laughs> it's a shooter. On the PC FX, running on the FX GA on a DOS PC. Neat. I like vertically scrolling shooters, but this one just hasn't really impressed me so far. That's fine. I'm not here to review the games. I'm just here to uh, show off that this, this card does things on a computer and it's fascinating the way it does it. Or more accurately, doesn't do certain things. So you cannot do anything on the PC side when you've got this doing its thing over here. As long as this program is loaded, nothing happens. And if you were to escape, like leave the, the program here and go back into DOS or Windows 3.1 or something, <laughs> it just quits. And it goes right back to this. If you were to try to run it here, it'll start and then it stops. And it'll start and then it'll stop. Like, that's it. Like it'll try to access it, but it's like, ah, I can't. And so yeah, it really is relying on the software side to communicate with the CD drive and, and some of the memory, I guess, and that's just how it is. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and try this one. It looks a little suspect, if you ask me. So this console, <laughs> the PCFX, it's kind of known for having a lot of um, dating sims and rather adult games. I don't know why, but a lot of them made its way onto this system and there's only 62 games for the entire PCFX platform. Uh, oops, I don't have PCFX running, I need that. But yeah, for whatever reason, of the 62 game library for the PCFX, of which this can play all of them, uh, a whole bunch of them are rather adult in nature, at least for YouTube standards. Now, I wouldn't call this one of those adult games necessarily, but even this one goes uh, <laughs> a little overboard with the upskirts, in my opinion. So, probably gonna skip this cutscene. Yep. 
And you select your character, and then you get to another bit of anime, because of course. Yeah. CD audio music, and yes, it does pipe uh, the CD audio from your CD drive through your PC sound card, and then the sound card goes out to that breakout box, or really into the breakout box, and then it goes out from the box to the TV. So yeah, it's just sort of snaking all the way through things and just passing it through externally instead of internally, like some other cards might. And there you go. Well, <laughs> I just died. But yeah, pretty simple little arcade platformer puzzler thing. And for some reason, the CD audio is much louder here than like anything else I've played. Uh, I guess this particular track is just loud and I've turned down the, the volume in DOS and everything. So I don't know. Yeah, that's a fun enough little arcade game, I guess. But uh, it's colorful, so there you go. PCFX games. Alrighty, well, let's try this one, Zinky. And that isn't that neat. <laughs> I got this donated to me recently. Nakamichi five disc CD ROM changer. It's a SCSI drive. It's pretty awesome. I like it. 16 speed for each of them. Unfortunately, it addresses each of the trays in there as a separate drive. It doesn't have a way to combine them, to my knowledge. So that's a little bit of an annoyance, but still, cool CD changer. And another thing is whatever kind of CD-ROM drive you're using, like whatever speed it is, it'll read it at that speed, so you can actually get much faster loading with uh, this than you would on a standard PCFX, because obviously PC drives were, in general, a lot faster uh, at this point than what was available on consoles. So much anime! That is what the system is for. Apparently they designed it really around like 20-something male anime people. <laughs> that, that, that was in the marketing, in the design docs. They're like, yeah, we want to appeal to the, to the anime guys in Japan. So here we are, Zinky FX. And yeah, you can select two characters here. Uh, hers is relatively useless from what I've found. She just has a, a really slow gun attack, but uh, he doesn't. He could beat people up and that's a lot more fun. Look, there's already people getting beat up, you know? That's just what this is about. Story things. My apologies for not knowing anything about this. <laughs> I'm sure some of you will. Many, maybe, I don't know. Seems to be a relatively popular thing. All right. Yeah, take that. Take your eyeball from the floor. <laughs> uh, so that's this. You pretty much just seem to fight a bunch of weird looking things one after another, like in rooms. Pretty basic beat em up. Apparently this game is worth like a thousand bucks or something. I don't get it, but hey, I'm sure somebody does. And there are an awful lot of JRPGs on here, but unfortunately many of them, most of them, don't seem to be translated from what I've seen. Um, perhaps I just don't know where to look, but I haven't seen a whole ton of translations, which for me, that's kind of a barrier to entry because uh, text and, and, and talking to people is rather important. See, like, you know, uh, you already lost me. All right. Oh, I got choices. Let's just go with that one. Uh, let's go with that one. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, this, this feels like one that would be translated somewhere, but I don't have a translated copy. Uh, and in lieu of that, I'm not gonna go any further because I've got other things to show here. 
like the two games, or well, I guess a game and a program, these are what came in the box, or at least this particular one. Yeah, same game FX, this is a PCFX GA game. So that's a separate thing that I think takes advantage of some of the chips that are in here. And then there's also this right here, Project Team Doga. I think it's called uh, Amateur Taikyu, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. That's okay. I think this is uh, some kind of an art program. So these are sealed, not gonna use those. We're just gonna get some burned versions from archive.org. And then I'm gonna start with Same Game FX. So yeah, this is one of the only games that was released for this specific platform, the, the GA platform. Apparently there were more planned, but I think there were only two games that were released officially, like, you know, uh, there, were, there were other things, but you know, we'll get to that. Same game. Mm. Okay. Now, oh, it is indeed a same game. <laughs> Played a lot of these over the years. Interesting. Yeah, look at those like 3D character, well, not characters. <laughs> Just little 3D objects. Little cubes and spinning thingies. I'm assuming that that's using this as the, the, the GA's 3D chip. I don't know. But sure, why not? Probably. Yay, same game. I actually do like these. There was one that I played quite a bit on the PC back in the day. Flux? I think that's what it's called. Just, just straight up Flux. Well, anyway, that's the same game. <laughs> Neat little puzzle game. You I mean, just try to eliminate all the blocks or the objects that happen to be on screen. What a pleasant little game, even if samey. So that was that, but let's check out this other one here that it came with. The interesting thing about this one, compared to the others we've tried so far, is that this is a PCFX GA DOS V program and not a game. So if you try to run it in the PCFX portion itself, it won't do anything, which is why I have it turned off. Uh, so yeah, let's just go into the D drive here and we should be able to yeah, get a directory reading. So it's saying that FXGA driver is not installed. Uh, we are on IO address. That one, yeah, add things. Just giving it a restart and seeing if it loads whatever it needs to. Looked like it did open up some different things, so. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And this is where I start whipping out the translation app. So, uh, okay. We got a animation to play here. Oh, I hear music. Ah, time to move the camera around. Oh, I see a weird 3D person. <laughs> so this is like a demonstration of its 3D capabilities on the FX GA card. We got a floating box and a human of sorts. <laughs> oh, look at the shading, so impressive. Hmm. Uh, flashing imagery warning, I suppose. Oh, yeah. This is brilliant. It does just seem to be like a pre-rendered video, so... Still. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Oh man, the capabilities. So yeah, I believe that is kind of what this program is supposed to let you do. It's like a 3D animation suite where you can design these things and render them out to video. Look at that, PC FX GA. Again though, that's just, it's just like a pre-rendered thingy. So let's see if maybe on uh, over here, I know you can't see it now, but let's go down to the one that says CGA Dragonfly. It seems to be just another yeah, dot mix file. So this is just, are these just pre-rendered? Is there anything you can actually do on here? Maybe this is just a demonstration CD. Because I was reading that there is software, you know, that lets you do this on this card. I just don't know if it's actually on here. 
Either way though, this is pretty darn cool. Too much information. A dragonfly. Oh yes. This is my jam right here. This kind of music, these kind of visuals. What? What a twist. Oh. Dinosaurs. Ah. You know how long it would take to do this back in the day? Holy crap. Those keyframes. <laughs> you can count them. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Wouldn't change a thing. Those repetitive sound effects are just the best. Oh no! Wily Coyote moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Rotate them. Just rotate that object. Oh man, what the. Okay. This is the best thing I've ever seen on Oddware. <laughs> this one animation right here. And that is just art, pure art. Shout out to all of the folks. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, so I'm assuming CGA in the context of what it said on the menu stands for computer generated animation, perhaps? Computer graphics animatic. Seems to only be a collection of like demos to watch. I really thought that this would be a thing where you could interact with it. Everything else just seems to be uh, well, no, that's an executable. This is actually pulling off some code now, so. Now that looks more pixely. This might be a real-time demo. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it is. We got Ron and Geo. Oh, look at this. I can change their skins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can select a man, but that's it. They look great, though. I want to do something with them. I don't know if I can. And unfortunately, this is the only controller I have. So I don't know if you need a second controller over there plugged in to uh, get the other guy selected. Let me see if I can just swap ports. Yeah, I can. Okay, okay. Ooh, look at this. I got a Virtua Fighter looking thing going on here. Does it have uh It does have... Look at that. It's like Tekken. Or any of the number of other ones that were doing the same thing around there. But yeah, still, look at that. 3D characters. Real time. So this is definitely an example of what the PC FX GA could have done. <laughs> that is more than I bargained for. That's really cool. Yeah. Take that, evil clone. I mean, you know, for a little tech demo for free, that's that's pretty cool. I like how there's like an explosion for the uppercut. All right, so that's a real-time 3D demo. I was hoping to find at least one on here. Okay, so I think I've got one more interactive demo that we can try on this CD. Oh, okay. Got something slowly loading in here. Line by line. Oh, whoa. You can move around this world of weirdness. Okay, that's pretty cool. You know. 
considering it is terrible and janky and broken. But uh, hey, 3D interactive world. I approve. So there's, that's the shoot. There's like no sound or anything. Yeah, that is not a not particularly great demo. Still, 3D. That's not quite what I expected from this disc, but I approve nonetheless, man. That dragonfly dinosaur fantasy animation with the fantastic soundtrack, pure oddware magic right there. All right, well, I suppose that is it for what I'm gonna show in this particular video anyway. There is more stuff out there, some of it I was hoping to track down and show off here, but uh, that's not been working out over many days of trying now. One of them being the other game that was released for the PC FXGA in particular, the other of two games. It's called New. I'm just gonna say it's pronounced that way. Yeah, it wasn't a game that was actually sold on its own or anything. It was included with a programming guide the footage you're seeing here was uploaded by Saber470, which, by the way, definitely check out their blog, YouTube channel. There's some links in the video description. The stuff they've posted has been extremely helpful in putting together what you've seen. And they've got lots of videos of direct gameplay captures of the other games and some homebrew, as well as a blog full of all kinds of interesting information. And we've been in touch and Saber actually got some of the homebrew over to me. I was gonna try installing it and I did try installing it. But unfortunately, what happens is uh, this. It seems to be that it is relying on this FXDB program which uh, I did track down a version of and put in here and like read the batch file and everything to make sure that it was in there. But, uh, it seems to be a Windows thing. So Japanese version of Windows 95 or 98 is required it seems. And I don't have a setup that would allow both the card and that and everything all together right now. So anyway, check out Saber 470's channel if you'd like to see those homebrew games in action. Uh, I think it's worth a look. It's just fascinating to see that there was indeed a scene for this kind of stuff in Japan for a few short years in the late 90s. If nothing else, I'm glad I got to see a dinosaur <laughs> flying on a dragonfly. Well, I suppose that is it for the NEC PCFX GA DOS V, a very easy to say name and uh, rather easy to use as well. Easier than I thought it would be. In fact, easier to set up even. I was expecting more along the lines of something like, uh, like the Creative 3DO Blaster that I covered, which was just all sorts of things connected internally to video cards and sound and other things that this just doesn't bother with. You pretty much just plug it in there. It sucks the life out of your computer while it's doing it th its thing and uh, that's about it, right? And you can play PCFX stuff as well as the GA stuff. That's the more interesting things that I wish I had more to show. Yeah, like some of the things that are mentioned back here, you got Doga Genie and the PCFX uh, Game Maker stuff. And G Maker has all sorts of SDKs and things. It's just things that I don't have access to when I was making this video. So uh, yeah, I know there's more out there. I don't know how many people bought it. Can't have been many because the PCFX itself was somewhat of a failure. The 98 version of this wasn't extremely popular either. And then this one, yeah, it just keeps going down and down and down the list in terms of success, popularity, and potential reached. So I think that makes a very fascinating piece of oddware. And if you've got any experience with it at all, <laughs> then, uh, or some programs maybe that I could try out on uh, a follow-up video of sorts, uh, let me know. Uh, either way though, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode of LGR Oddware, then great. I've got plenty more where this came from and more to come in the future with a new video on all kinds of different topics each week here on LGR. And once again, thank you very much for watching.